चुनाद पी सुनी चैना तरौरे वा सहिष्णुना अमानी ना मान देना कीर्तनीय सदा हरि हरे नाम हरे नाम हरे नाम आय बकी बलम कलो नास्तेव 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 गतिर अन्यथा चैप्टर 18 कैरेक्टर ऑफ वन इन एक्सटैटिक लव रूप गोस्वामी नेक्स्ट डिस्क्राइब्स द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ अ पर्सन who has actually developed his or her ecstatic love for krishna so this first sentence illustrates to us how this process of krishna consciousness is a science because now you're going to know exactly what are the symptoms of this stage just like nishant he knows if somebody says i have this symptom i have this symptom i have this symptom nishant knows mm you may have this particular ailment because you have to go by the symptoms am i right nishant right by the symptoms then you can tell so spiritual life is the same way if you know what's the science which this nectar of devotion is teaching then you can know i'm not on this platform i'm on this platform the characteristics are as follows number 1 he or she is always anxious to utilize his or her time in the devotional service of the lord so the sanskrit is of yartha kalat bam one does not like to be idle one wants service always 24 hours a day without deviation number 2 one is always reserved and perseverant and that is called shanti that's k s not shanti but shanti number 3 one is always detached from material attraction virakti number 4 One does not long for any material respect in return for his or her activities. Now that is called mana shunyata. Number five, one is always certain that Krishna will bestow his mercy upon one. We read that a little bit in the previous chapter, where Prabhupada was saying that one should not wait around for Krishna. one should do the prescribed duties not wait around yes i'm going to get no you have to do your prescribed duties and at the same time always expect that krishna will have his mercy so that's called asha bandha another way that asha bandha is sometimes explained hope against hope number 6 One is always very very eager to serve the Lord faithfully. The Sanskrit is samutkantha. Number 7. One is very much attached to the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And that's called nama gane sada ruchi. So everybody can tell right there if you find that japa is oh man i got to get up and chant then you know you're not on this platform but if you wake up and you go jai i get to chant today hari bol now you know oh i have some attachment or maybe it's your service <coughs> if you look forward every day to your service then that's a good indication not like Oh man, I got to do that today. Then you know where you, where you're at. Number 8, one is always eager to describe the transcendental qualities of the Lord. Asaktistad gunakyane. So, I will be honest, I have some eagerness for this. I have eagerness for this, so I got something going. Number 9, one is very pleased to live in a place where the lord's pastimes are performed mathura vrindavan or dwaraka that's called priti stud basati stale i think 
Some of you have that. You are eager for that. Or we could add, like I said, Mathura, Vrindavan, Dwarka, or New Dwarka. Mayapur, of course. There's no difference between Vrindavan and Mayapur. So if you have attachment, now, there is a place, it's not mentioned here, but there's a place and they have this temple, Radha Govinda. What's the name of that place? Jaipur. Right. Isn't that where you're from? You have attachment for there? Very good. Excellent. All right. So that ends the nine symptoms of the Baba stage. So everybody can now tell where I'm at or where you're at. Everywhere. Next, so now Prabhupada is going to discuss them individually. Utilization of time. An unalloyed devotee who has developed ecstatic love for Krishna is always engaging his words in reciting prayers to the Lord. I remember when I first joined the temple, there was this one devotee, Kapindradas, and he was always reciting prayers. Even while he was eating prasadam, he would be chanting verses. And I remember distinctly at night we would have hot milk in the basement of the New York temple. Somebody would be reading Krishna book and us new devotees, we would sometimes, because they would give you two cups because the milk was very hot. So they taught you Indian style. You keep pouring from one cup to the other till it cools down. So, especially guys like me, uh, the milk spills on the floor. But this devotee, he understood. Oh, it's this Krishna Prasadam. He would go down on the floor while reciting mantras and lick up the spilt milk. I went, oh my God, these guys are far out. These Hare Krishnas. <laughs> that devotee Kapindra, he used to be a Hasidic Jew. You know, with the sideburn Sikas, you know, the Hasidic. Yeah. So he was a Hasidic Jew who became Prabhupada's disciple. Somewhere preaching. Very sincere. Within the mind, one is always thinking of Krishna and with one's body, either offers obeisances by bowing down before the deity or engages in some other service. And... The idea of bowing down, that's Krishna's instruction in the Bhagavad Gita twice. Mam Namaskuru. Twice Krishna mentions it as an important item. During these ecstatic activities, one sometimes sheds tears. In this way, one's whole life is engaged in the service of the Lord with not a moment wasted on any other engagement. So that's, that's the key. One is fully engaged only in devotional service. Perseverance. When a person is undisturbed, even in the presence of various causes of disturbance, he is called reserved and persevering. An example of this perseverance and reservation is found in the behavior of King Parikshit as described in the first canto, 19th chapter, verse 15 of Srimad Bhagavatam. Tang mopayatang pratyantu vipra ganga cha devi dritta chittam ishe vijo pasrista kuhakas takshakavopa dashat valang gayata vishnu gata the king says there to all the sage present before him at the time of his death, My dear Brahmins, you should always accept me as your surrendered servant. I have come to the bank of the Ganges just to devote my heart and soul unto the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So please bless me that Mother Ganges may also be pleased with me. Let the curse of the Brahmin's son fall upon me I do not mind 
I only request that at the last moment of my life, all of you will kindly chant the holy name of Vishnu so that I may realize his transcendental qualities. So, Manjari, the last stage of her life, she wanted to be in Udwaraka. And how did Krishna arrange? Devotees were coming all throughout the day, chanting, reading, and even if nobody was there, the Prabhupada tape was playing. Ideal way to give up the life. This example of Maharaj Pariksit's behavior, he's remaining patient even at the last point of his life. His undisturbed condition of mind is an example of reservation. This is one of the characteristics of a devotee who has ecstat developed ecstatic love for Krishna. Yes, because he should not have been cursed and the boy, Shringi's father, <coughs> chastised the boy saying, why did you do this cursing? There was no... That, <coughs> that was improper for you because the boy was immature. So Maharaj Parikshit should not have been cursed. Maharaj Parikshit could have nullified the curse, but he took it as a sign from Krishna. Let me go. Let me go back to Godhead. Also, another example you could give would be Chitra Ketu when he was cursed by Parvati. And when he was cursed, he came down and he bowed down to Parvati and Lord Shiva and he said, yes, I accept the curse. And Lord Shiva said, see, he was talking to Parvati. See, I told you how great the devotees are. Just see, he's powerful enough also to counter because previous to this he had gotten the darshan of Lord Ananta and he knew he was going back to Godhead it was already a settled fact so Lord Shiva was saying just see how these devotees are they don't care if they're in heaven or hell doesn't mean anything to them what, what was the his curse was that he would become a demon and then he became Vritrasura and he fought against Indra and when Indra killed him he went back to Godhead and Indra actually couldn't kill him and Vritrasura was saying come on kill me I want you to kill me because as soon as you kill me I'm going back to Godhead and it took Indra a long time to kill that Vitrasura. But Vitrasura went back to Godhead. And in the end, Indra became uh, contaminated by sinful reaction. And for one year, he had to hide in the stem of a lotus because the sinful reactions of killing a Brahmin was chasing him in the form of an old woman with tuberculosis and she was chasing him wherever he went so he had only one recourse goddess lakshmi allowed him to stay within the stem of a lotus for one year and he was delivered it's interesting in that connection before uh Indra killed the Brahmin. I think his name was Vishwarup. Uh, the Brahmanas, either then or when killing Vitrasura, the Brahmanas said, No, no, don't worry. We'll protect you from the sinful reaction of killing a Brahmin. Was that? It was afterwards. But the thing is, the Brahmins sort of lied because they could not protect him. So was it Vitrasura or the, or the, or the Brahmin? Which one was it that the Brahmin said? Was Vitrasura, okay. 
So I was Vitrasura. Yes, because Vitrasura was uh, the son of Tvashta, Vishvarup's father, did a yagya. Yes, and he was, came out of the fire yagya. Let us continue. Detachment. The senses are always desiring sense enjoyment. But when a devotee develops transcendental love for Krishna, his senses are no longer attracted by material desires. This state of mind is called detachment. There is a nice example of this detachment in connection with the character of King Bharat. In the fifth canto, 14th chapter, verse 43 of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated, Yo dusyajan dhara sutan surid rajyang ridis prasha jahao yuvaiva malavad utash mashloka lalasa. Emperor Bharat was so attracted by the beauty of the lotus feet of Krishna that even in his youthful life he gave up all kinds of attachments to family, children, friends, kingdom, etc as though they were untouchable stools. Emperor Bharat provides a typical example of detachment. He had everything enjoyable in the material world, but he left it. This means that detachment does not mean artificially keeping oneself aloof and apart from the allurements of attachment. Even in the presence of such allurements, if one can remain unattracted by material attachments, he is called detached. In the beginning, of course, a neophyte devotee must try to keep himself apart from all kinds of alluring attachments. But the real position of a mature devotee is that even in the presence of all allurements, he is not at all attracted. This is the actual criterion of detachment. Next, pridelessness. When a devotee, in spite of possessing all the qualities of pure realization, is not proud of his position, he is called prideless. In the Padma Purana, it is stated that King Bhagirath was the emperor above all other kings, yet he developed such ecstatic love for Krishna that he became a mendicant and went out begging even to the homes of his political enemies and untouchables. He was so humble that he respectfully bowed down before them. There are many similar instances in the history of India. Even very recently, about 200 years ago or less, one big landlord known as Lal Babu a Calcutta landholder, became a Vaishnava and lived in Vrindavan. He was also begging from door to door, even at the homes of his political enemies. Begging involves being ready to be insulted by persons to whose home one has come. That is natural, but one has to tolerate such insults for the sake of Krishna. The devotee of Krishna can accept any position in the service of Krishna. Next, great hope. The strong conviction that one will certainly receive the favor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called in Sanskrit, Asha Bandha. Asha Bandha means to continue to think because I'm trying my best to follow the routine principles of devotional service, I am sure that I will go back to Godhead, back to home. So notice again, I, because I'm trying my best to follow the routine principles. So that's the third time this concept has come up in today's class. You have to try your best to follow the routine principles and at the same time, expect Krishna's mercy. In this connection, one prayer by Rupa Goswami is sufficient to exemplify this hopefulness. He says, Naprema Shravanadi Bhaktir 
अपि बा योग था बा वैष्णव ज्ञान बा शुभ कर्म बा कियद अहो सज जातीय अप्यस्ति बा हीना दाति का साध के त्वयि तथा प्यचेज्य मूला सती हे गोपी जन वल्लभ यतायते हा हा मद आशायव माम आई हैव नो लव फॉर कृष्णा nor for the causes of developing love of krishna namely hearing and chanting so that's important never forget the causes for developing love of krishna hearing and chanting you know me since i began i have always harped on this always do hearing and chanting i harp on this practically in every class that i've given and the process of bhakti yoga by which one is always thinking of krishna and fixing his lotus feet in the heart is also lacking in me as far as philosophical knowledge or pious works are concerned i don't see any opportunity for me to execute such activities but above all i am not even born of a nice family therefore i must simply pray to you gopi jana vallabha krishna maintainer and beloved of the gopis i simply wish and hope that some way or other i may be able to approach your lotus feet and this hope is giving me pain because i think myself quite incompetent to approach that transcendental goal of life the purport is that under this heading of asha bhanda one should continue to hope against hope that some way or other he or she will be able to approach the lotus feet of the supreme lord next item eagerness for achieving the desired success when one is sufficiently eager to achieve success in devotional service that eagerness is called samut kantha this means quote unquote complete eagerness actually this eagerness is the price for achieving success in krishna consciousness everything has some value and one has to pay the value before obtaining or possessing it it is stated in the vedic literature that to purchase the most valuable thing krishna consciousness one has to develop intense eagerness for achieving success see this is what maya does maya takes away your eagerness by alluring you by tempting you by distracting you she says don't become eager for krishna conscious be eager to enjoy me come on so that's what maya does so we have to be determined no i have to remain eager to serve krishna this intense eagerness is very nicely expressed by bilva mangala thakur in his book krishna karnamrita he says twach chai shabang tri bhuvanad butang iti avehi mach chapalan chatavan va mama vadi gamyam taking karomi viralang murali vilasi mudghang mukambujam udikshitum ikshanabyam i am eagerly awaiting to see that boy of brindavan whose bodily beauty is captivating the whole universe whose eyes are always bounded by black eyebrows and expand, expanded like lotus petals and who is always eagerly glancing over his devotees and therefore moving slightly here and there his eyes are always moist his lips are colored like copper and through those lips there comes a sound vibration which drives one madder than a mad elephant 
I want so much to see him at Vrindavan. Next item, attachment to chanting the holy names of the Lord. In the same Krishna Karnamrita, there is another statement about the chanting of Radharani. So just see, even Radharani chants. It is said by one of the associates of Radharani, Rodana Bindu Maranda Syandi, Drig Indi Varadya Govinda, Tava Madura Svarakanti Gayati Nama Baling Bala. O Lord Govinda, the girl who is the daughter of King Vrishabhanu is now shedding tears and she is anxiously chanting your holy name, Krishna. Krishna. And what does Prabhupada teach? Chant Krishna's name like the child crying for its mother. Next item. Eagerness to describe the Lord's transcendental qualities. Attachment for chanting the glories of the Lord is also expressed in the Krishna Karnamrita as follows. What shall I do for Krishna? who is pleasing beyond all pleasable conceptions and who is naughtier than all restless boys. The idea of Krishna's beautiful activities is attracting my heart and I do not know what I can do. Attraction for living in a place where Krishna has his pastimes. In the book Padyavali, by Rupa Goswami, there is the following statement about Vrindavan. In this place, the son of Maharaj Nanda used to live with his father, who was the king of all cowherder men. In this place, Lord Krishna broke the cart in which the Shakatasura demon was concealed. At this place, Damodar who can cut the knot of our material existence was tied up by his mother Yashoda. So that nice poetry. Krishna was tied up by ropes, right? And there were, must have been a knot which Yashoda could not tie, the final one, until Krishna allowed it. But here, we want Damodar to cut the knot of our material existence. So very nice poetry. A pure devotee of Lord Krishna resides in the district of Mathura or Vrindavan and visits all the place where Krishna's pastimes were performed. Did you do that in your last visit? You did that. At these sacred places, Krishna displayed his childhood activities with the cowherd boys and Mother Yashoda. The system of circumambulating all these places is still current among devotees of Lord Krishna and those coming to Mathura and Vrindavan always feel transcendental pleasure. Actually, if someone goes to Vrindavan, he or she will immediately feel separation from Krishna who performed such nice activities when he was present there. Such attraction for remembering Krishna's activities is known as attachment for Krishna. There are impersonalist philosophers and mystics, however, who by a show of devotional service want ultimately to merge into the existence of the Supreme Lord. They sometimes try to imitate a pure devotee sentiment for visiting the holy places where Krishna had his pastimes but they simply have a view for salvation and so their activities cannot be considered attachment. Someone may ask, how do I know that I don't fall into this category? And the way you know is because when it says with a view for salvation, it means they have no desire or they have no interest to want to do service. The concept of salvation is devoid of any thought, let me do service. But if 
your objective in going to Vrindavan or whatever is I want to be engaged in service now you know you're good because if you didn't then you would want this situation of oh now I've I've done it now I can relax whereas a devotee no I don't want to relax I want service I I want to do something. It is said by Rupa Goswami that the attachment exhibited by pure devotees for Krishna cannot possibly be perfected in the hearts of fruitive workers or karmis or mental speculators because such attachment in pure Krishna consciousness is very rare and not possible to achieve even for many liberated persons. Same thing. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Manushyanam Sahasresyu, Kaschit Yatati Siddhaye, Yatatam Api Siddhanam, Kaschin Mam Beti Tatvataha. Yes, hardly one, Krishna says, knows me in truth. And how will you know Krishna in truth? By your spontaneous desire to render service. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Liberation from material contamination is the stage at which devotional service can be achieved. Who knows the verse that Prabhupada is referring to? Who knows the verse? Rama? Okay, here it says, As stated in Bhagavad Gita, liberation from material contamination is the stage at which devotional service can be achieved. That's the verse. She knows her Bhagavad Gita. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Na Shochati Na Kangshati Samak Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhakting Labate Puram That's when you know you know your Gita. Very good. Excellent. For a person who simply wants to have liberation and to merge into the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, attachment to Krishna is not possible to acquire. So here, the difference between Brahma Jyoti and Krishna. The Brahma Jyoti is Krishna, and at the same time, the Brahma Jyoti is not Krishna. It's a feature of Krishna, and it's absolute, so somebody could say, hey, there's no difference. But actually, at the same time, there is a difference. Because in the Brahma Jyoti, there's no devotional service. But in Goloka Vrindavan, you will get to render a service to Krishna, the person. That's what the devotee wants. I want to do something, some service for Krishna. Just like you all want to do some service at the temple. Either it be RT or working in the Pujari room, or in my case, I want to lecture and speak. Somebody else, they want to cook, or they want to lead kirtan. The devotee, the symptom of devotee is, I want some service. That's a devotee. I want some service. This attachment is very confidentially kept by Krishna, and is bestowed only upon pure devotees. Even ordinary devotees cannot have such pure attachment for Krishna. Therefore, how is it possible for success to be achieved by persons whose hearts are contaminated by the actions and reactions of fruitive activities and who are entangled by various types of mental speculation? This was the opening theme of this nectar of devotion. You have to become free from fruitive activities and free from mental speculation. That was, you could say, the opening uh, preamble. That verse, which is quoted, Anyabilashita shunyam, jnana karmadhyanabritam, anukuyena krishna anushilanam, bhaktir uttama, bhaktir uttama. This is the topmost. There are many so-called devotees who artificially think of Krishna's pastimes known as Ashtakaliya Lila. Sometimes 
one may artificially imitate these, pretending that Krishna is talking with him in the form of a boy, or else one may pretend that Radharani and Krishna both have come to one and are talking with him. Such characteristics are sometimes exhibited by the impersonalist class of men, and they may captivate some innocent persons who have no knowledge in the science of devotional service. However, as soon as an experienced devotee sees all of these caricatures, he can immediately evaluate such rascaldom. If such a pretender is sometimes seen possessing imitative attachment to Krishna, that will not be accepted as real attachment. It may be said, however, that such attachment gives the pretender hope that he or she may eventually rise onto the actual platform of pure devotional service. This imitative attachment can be divided into two headings, namely shadow attachment and para transcendental attachment. If someone, without undergoing the regulative principles of devotional service, or without being guided by a bona fide spiritual master, shows such imitative attachment, this is called shadow attachment. Sometimes it is found that a person actually attached to material enjoyment or salvation has the good fortune to associate with pure devotees while they are engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord. By the good grace of the Lord, one may also cooperate and join in the chanting. At that time, simply by the association of such pure devotees, the moonlight rays from their hearts reflect on him and by the influence of the pure devotees, he or she may show some likeness of attachment caused by inquisitiveness. But this is very flickering. This is quite evident. Uh, someone may hear the chanting on the street. Someone may attend Ratyatra. And by that, oh, let me see what this is all about. They may come to the temple. But after some time, they go back to their old ways. So they had some attachment, time being, but for whatever reason, they could not continue. And if by the manifestation of such shadow attachment, one feels the disappearance of all material pangs, then it is called para attachment. Such shadow attachment or para attachment can develop if one associates with a pure devotee or visits holy places like Vrindavan or Mathura. And if an ordinary man develops such attachment for Krishna and fortunately performs devotional activities in the association of pure devotees, he can also rise to the platform of pure devotional service. The conclusion is that transcendental attachment is so powerful that if such attachment is seen manifested even in some common man by the association of a pure devotee, it can bring one to the perfectional stage. But such attachment for Krishna cannot be invoked in a person without his being sufficiently blessed by the association of pure devotees. In my case, after I first saw Prabhupada, I only saw him that one time, and I didn't see him again for many months. So in the interim, when I would go to the temple, there was one devotee, and he would always take care of me when I visited the temple. He would always give me service, and while he was engaging me in service, he would answer questions and he would preach to me. His name was Atindriya Das. So in my case, Atindriya Das, he made me a devotee. 
Because whenever I would visit the temple, immediately, okay, Bhakti Nick, come with me. And I remember one time, we went to the back of the temple outside. There was a, a yard. And so he had me sweeping. And while I was sweeping, he was telling me and preaching to me. So he, now every time I would come, he would immediately take care of me. So by his blessings, I was able to take the step, join the temple. As attachment can be invoked by the association of pure devotees, so attachment can also be extinguished by offenses committed at the lotus feet of pure devotees. So therefore, Vanchika Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhyayepacha Patitanang Bhavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Please forgive my offenses. And as far as you, you cannot offend me. It's impossible. Impossible. I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to accept offenses but I can offend you so I beg forgiveness but don't worry you can never offend me why because because of you I am who I am that's why you you have created Nirantara yes without you my wife would never have said I don't want you to get a job. I want you to keep preaching. If Namahat had become a failure, my wife would never have said in 2007, that's all right. When the temple let me go, my wife would have said, well, you don't have anything else going. But because you made Namahat successful, then my wife said, yeah, you just continue preaching. But I have to give you all credit. Thank you. You are keeping me alive. You are keeping me out of Maya. And I don't have to have some stupid job. It's a mutual job. Jai. Jai. Hari Bo. To be more clear, by the association of pure devotees, attachment for Krishna can be aroused. But if one commits offenses at the lotus feet of devotee, one's shadow attachment or para attachment can be extinguished. So that's why Lord Chaitanya says, protect your creeper from the mad elephant offense. And what does Prabhupada say? When we associate with non-devotees, that's when the mad elephant can come in. So you have to be very careful in your jobs. You have to deal, you know especially, you have to deal with so many non-devotees. So that's unavoidable. But you don't associate with them and do what they want. Go to the bar, go to the... Right? At a certain point, you have to tell them, no. I can be with you at the job, but now you want me to do this. No, cannot do. Because once I cross that step and start to associate with them on their level, Prabhupada says that's when the mad elephant is let loose. So in dealing with us householders, in dealing with the non-devotees, it has to be up to a certain point. And we cannot go beyond that. And they may say whatever they say, too bad. We have to protect our creeper of devotion. We have to fence it and guard it. And that's why from the beginning, when I started with all of you, I told you, yes, you have to work during the week, but on the weekends, you have to cleanse yourself because you're getting so much contamination in your jobs. So I always told you, weekends, Namahat Temple, and you all followed my instruction, right? I remember I used to preach like that. That's how I convinced you that during the week there's all this contamination all right on the weekend now take a bath cleanse cleanse
cleanse. Damahat Temple weekend is for cleaning up. This extinguishing is like the waning of the full moon, which gradually decreases and at last becomes dark. One should therefore be very careful while associating with pure devotees to guard against committing an offense at their lotus feet. Trans and yeah, now on this point, committing offenses with devotees, more than likely, it will occur when there is a conflict, when somebody is trying to impede your service or usurp your service or deny you service. This happens. Or criticize. It happens. But don't you have to still be Trinad the P. That's very hard. That's a fact. Everybody has that. You lose the temper and you become offensive. And then you feel, realize that this somebody was offensive to you. So I've got to get back at him or her. That's human nature. Yeah, but how do you avoid that? You avoid that? What does Lord Chaitanya tell us? Always. I, yes, I agree. And everybody has that. With God brothers... Everybody, even sometimes with temple authorities. You, of course, it's your house. But not talking about God brothers or senior devotees, but this is, you know, devotees who are trying to take away your service. It's your day to do the service. In spite of that, they take away your service and give to somebody else as if you don't exist. So, it's directly like an insult to you. And then they will pass on comments like, No, 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 go Prabhu, don't touch this with the feet. And he's doing it, he's walking on that. And he's saying, don't touch with the feet. I said, what's the difference? I said, what, what are you talking about? No, 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 you're not, you're not supposed to do this. I said, is there any logic behind this? You're, you're supposed to walk, you're just spreading this for Abhishek. You're doing this for Abhishek and you're spreading and you're straightening it out with your feet. No, 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 Prabhu, don't do this. So this, this uh, Prabhupada, what he has said at times about everybody should become a guru, they take it in a wrong way. They want to become a guru of your, you know, other gurus. Everybody, I mean, likes everybody to wants to be a guru in that way. It, it's a wrong thing. So how do you stop that? How do you correct this? Okay, the way to correct it Obviously, the person isn't ready to hear. He's so, you go to his authority. Okay. Then, after that, let it go. I don't feel like I'm going to the authority. Okay, then, if you don't want to do that, yeah. let it go. Because it does, yeah, it doesn't really let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Because you can, you can only instruct someone if they're ready to hear. But in this case that you're talking about, the person is simply going to argue more, get agitated more, so you're... So the best thing, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let it go, because what can you do? So, so at that moment, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, <laughs> Hare Hare. That's best. Prabhu, after doing so many years of service that I am in there, 96, 95, 96, constantly, I'm going through so many motions of people insulting for no reason, humiliating, and still you are there. Becoming and guru. And become, trying to become your guru's guru. You know? Of course. Yeah. But the thing is, it happens to everyone. It even happens to the temple president. <laughs> I'm telling you, it happens to everyone. Everyone experiences this. Here's how to see it. See, externally we think it's this person. But the transcendental way to see it, ah, Krishna is testing me. 
He wants to see, will I remember him or will I again become false ego? So the thing, like we just read about Ambarish and Durbasa. Now Durbasa is not a devotee. Ambarish is, but how did Ambarish take it? He didn't retaliate, right? And yes, it is so difficult. And the other example I give, Lord Shiva in the sacrifice, Daksha is blaspheming him. Lord Shiva just, I know. I can appreciate, but take it from me. You're not the, everyone goes through it. F, of course, <laughs> everybody. So, thank you very much, Prabhu. <laughs> Just, yes. Look, I remember, remember I for some time I was the vice president? So one devotee came up to me, said, Prabhu, you're not qualified to be vice president. You're unfit. So, I, I said, no. I remembered. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> That's how you deal. Otherwise, you're just going to get angry and that it's, it, he's already done what you want. <laughs> he's already, in the word, you've already done exactly what he wants. So the best way to defeat an envious person is to, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. There's the story of if they're, but see, if the person's already on that plane, obviously they're not ready to listen. But obviously, by the person's speech, obvious, like you, you correctly said it, he's acting like the guru of your guru. So there's no discussion. This, what do you you can argue and debate it's, you think he's going to change his mind no so the best way to defeat to defeat him thank you very much no no thank you very much then he'll leave you alone because obviously what he wants you should recognize me. Oh, yes. Thank, and you have to do it sincerely. Sincere. Not like, I mean, no. <laughs> Since, you know, and then, then walk away. Because if you walk away, he could still, what are you?